After putting it off for far too long, today I'm building a raised bed, including a couple of things to prolong its life, one of which I guarantee you you've never seen before. Mm. So yeah, since I had the mini digger in here, I've just not had the time to really tidy things up. And I'm really keen to get some raised beds in because the seeds that you would have seen me put in just a couple of weeks ago have germinated and are coming on nicely. And although the weather's still rubbish, we are at the end of April. So if I don't get some beds sorted out soon, I'm gonna be in trouble with seeds with nowhere to go, which is exactly the way I ended up this time last year. So I'm thinking maybe three sets of raised beds. Today I'm just trying to get one finished in this area. But the thing is, in this area, I've got all kinds of stuff in the way. I've got car tires, broken pavings, all kinds of metal work. So before I even think about doing any timber work and making any raised beds, I've got to bite the bullet and clear this area. All of this rubbish strewn about is a legacy from the previous owners that is still getting in the way. Like these car tires that I think I'll end up paying to dispose of at some stage. As well as the man-made rubbish, I still have some brambles that I missed when I cleared this area with the mini digger, which are now starting to grow again and need to come out. These are hugely invasive and their roots travel meters in all directions. And whenever I dig them up, I can't help but think there's something out of the film The Alien. I also have this large pile of rubbish left over from the week with the mini digger, including a few concrete pavers that are over two inches thick and are heavy and a pain to move, to say the least. Within this pile, I also have a mixture of soil, roots and bits of glass left over from an old greenhouse that was demolished. So I decide that I need to sieve it. I've inherited this mesh, which is around about the right size. So I build a simple frame around it so I can hopefully remove the good from the bad. I have quite a lot of this to do over the next few months, so I'll be making some improvements to this frame in the future. Anyway, on with the raised beds, and I've decided the first one, I'm gonna put two meters away from my fence, and looking at the area I have, I'm gonna make it 1.2 meters wide and 3.6 meters long, using two boards in height, that's 300 in total. Before I do anything, I need to work out the height I'm gonna put them at. So after a period of contemplation, I think this first raised bed has to be slightly lower than the ground around it, as it then will look right with the fence next to it and for the future raised beds on the other side.
Rather than just building a four-sided frame and dropping it onto the ground, I decide to put in stakes and build around them. I'm using 150 by 22 millimeter treated timber here that comes in 2.4 meter or eight foot lengths. So one and a half boards on each long side by half a board wide. So in all, the timber cost around 50 pound for my local wood yard, which is gonna be a lot cheaper than your average DIY store. I would prefer to build these from something bigger like sleepers, but I calculated that would cost around three to four times as much. I use a string line to make sure that the intermediate posts are in line and I've just offset it with a piece of 18mm ply. So I've just cut some more stakes. The stakes I'm using here is just standard pressure treated two by two that I just cut into 600 lengths and put a point on the end. And before I get on with that, if you're thinking about designing one of these, and personally I like them as high as possible because they're easier to use. But if you're designing one of these, please bear in mind that once it's built, you've got to fill it. And if you build something that's really high, it's going to take many cubic meters of material and it's impractical to go down to your DIY shop and buy a few bags you just won't fill it so think about where that material is going to come from you'll see on YouTube lots of ideas where you can put twigs and logs and all of that that's just delaying the inevitable all of that will gradually break down the whole thing will settle and at some point in the future you're going to have to fill it up so if you make it too high it takes so much material it'll cost you a fortune So one thing I am a little bit concerned about is that in time, these sides with the pressure of soil in the middle are gonna bow out and not necessarily fail, but they're gonna look a bit rubbish because they're gonna be pushed to one side. And some people try to stop that by putting a tie in the middle of timber and screwing through either side. But that doesn't work because the timber in the middle, the screw is going into the end grain so you've got damp timber, screw into end grain, which will inevitably pull out and fail. So what I'm going to try here is to use some of this, which is galvanised steel banding tape, which I'm going to loop around these uprights and secure at both ends and set it at a level that is going to be below the soil level, so you won't be able to see it. And this sort of stuff, I mean, this is going to be excellent in tension, unlike a piece of timber where you're screwing into the end grain. It's really just not going to work. This type of banding is readily available and not expensive. And all I do is to screw it into the posts on either side to essentially make a loop of it around both. And you may be wondering why screwing it in this way makes any difference at all. Well, there's two differences. First of all, the screw is going into the side of the timber rather than the end grain, which is a lot stronger. And also, the force is acting in shear against the screw, which is two planes cutting against cross each other, rather than actual force, which is just the screw being pulled out along. Shear is generally always stronger, so that's never going to pull out. And although there's some slack in that at the moment, 
it only has to move a couple of millimeters and it becomes absolutely taut so that isn't going anywhere the second thing i'm going to do to increase the life of these beds is to use a dpm material to protect the wood from the damp soil there's also a theory that you don't really want your treated timber in contact with soil you're growing your veg in to eat. Now, I'm not sure if that's correct or it makes any difference, but by doing it this way, I don't need to worry. Isn't it amazing? You get thousands of staples. You put hundreds in your staple gun. And within seconds, they're all gone. I have no idea where they go. I cut the plastic long enough that it will protect both boards and wrap around the bottom of the lower board, protecting it from the soil as much as I can. With all the posts at the same level, I use my 18mm ply spacer to position the top of the board and fix it in place, knowing that it will be level. Because of the plastic, I actually fix the top board first, so the lower board can sit on the DPM, protecting it from the bottom surface. Being 3.6 metres long and using 2.4 metre long boards, I stagger the joints just to help strengthen the sides. With all the preparation done, it doesn't take long before the boards are in place and protected on their face and the bottom with the DPM. The next morning, the weather is a lot brighter, which gives me the opportunity to tidy up the surrounding area and lay some weed membrane around the perimeter. I'm still waiting on the delivery of stone to go on top of this, so in the meantime, I still some for my drive just to hold it down temporarily. So I finished fixing the timber bed and then I've sort of leveled the ground around it and I was lucky because I had to actually cut the ground. So a lot of the material around here has then gone inside, which means I don't have to transport so much material. It's still hard work though, Trust me, moving material is 10 times harder than fixing boards together. I spread the soil around evenly and then partially compact it by walking on it just for one pass. If you don't do this now, it will definitely compact whether you like it or not over the next couple of weeks as the rain hits it. Then you'll find it's lower than you want it to be and then you'll have to top it up anyway. So after five large wheelbarrow falls from my compost heap, it's just about full, plus a bag or two of shop-bought compost just to give it a fine surface. So I'm really happy with the result. And ironically, as I was filling it up with compost, those steel ties that I put in actually became taut. So they're already doing their job which is interesting to see. I've had a chance to plant the thing up, and there it is. There is my one and only strawberry plant, so there should be plenty of room for it to grow and give me some strawberries. Did you hear that? I'm expecting a lot from you. You've got all of this, all that nutrition, all for you. Do you realize how much this has cost me? 50 quid plus a bit of compost, 60 pounds. Do you realize how many strawberries I'm buying Tesco's for 60 quid?